Hi, welcome. My name is Arun Patwardhan, and today I will be talking about creating custom operators in Swift. We will be looking at what custom operators are, why would we need custom operators, what is required in order for us to create our own operators, how do we go about creating our own operators, and finally, how do we use the custom operators that we have created? So what are custom operators? We are all aware of the built-in operators in the Swift programming language. Operators like addition, subtraction, multiplication, modulo, greater than comparison, equality comparison, not, just to name a few. These operators are defined by the system. It is also possible for us to overload some of these operators. However, there are situations where we would like to create our own operators that perform operations not defined by the system. That's exactly what custom operators are. They are operators de defined by the developer. These are not overloaded operators but completely new operators that don't exist otherwise. These operators are used within the project that we are working on. It is also possible for us to share these operators using Swift packages. They are typically associated with a specific type and their behavior is also defined by us. Why would we need such an operator? There are many reasons. Using custom operators allows our code to be more compact. Entire function calls can be condensed into a single operator. This improves the readability of our code. Properly chosen symbols can convey the message immediately and very easily. One of the other things that custom operators help us achieve is consistency. By using standard operations, as operators, we make our code more familiar and consistent to others who may read it. Programmers are familiar with the concept of operators and using them for different operations. So even if they may not immediately recognize the operator, they would understand that there is some task for them to perform. And finally, it encourages, encourages reusability. So before we get started, let us have a look at how to create our own operators. And for that, there are certain things that we need to keep ready at hand. First, we need to know the action that will be performed by the operator. This is typically the logic. Second, we need to pick a symbol for our operator. There are some rules we need to follow while picking a symbol. We will look at those rules in a moment. We also need to decide if the operator is an infix, postfix, or a prefix operator. Finally, we need to decide on the precedence of the operator. This, of course, only applies to infix operators. As I mentioned, there are some rules that must be followed when we are constructing the symbol for our operator. Most of the requirements are rather straightforward. However, Choosing the right symbol is a very important task. There are a certain set of symbols that are allowed. There are rules as far as white space around operators are concerned. And finally, certain symbols are allowed only in combination with other symbols. Let's have a look. There are basically three kinds of operators that we can have. This is not a rule as such, but it is, it is necessary for us to decide what kind of operator we are creating. It can be a prefix, postfix, or an infix operator. Operators that appear before a variable or a value are prefix operators. Operators that appear after a variable or a value are postfix, or postfix operators. Operators that appear in between variables and or values, we could have a combination of the two, 
RN fix operators. The type of operator to choose depends on the task we wish to perform. We will talk more about this when we look at some examples in a minute. This is the important bit. Which are the characters that are allowed for usage as an operator? We can have ASCII symbols that are used for built-in operators, like the assignment, subtraction, addition, multiplication. We can have many mathematical symbols too, or miscellaneous symbols, dingbats. There are a lot of options available. Of course, this list is not complete. The complete list also contains different unicodes for different symbols. Here on the slide, we can see a list of all the different codes that can be used within an operator. And the codes themselves represent a different symbol which can be used as an operator. A list of all the symbols that are available in Mac OS. You can simply bring up the keyboard preferences within system preferences. Under the keyboard tab, you will have a checkbox show keyboard and emoji viewers in menu bar. Select that. You should see the icon popping up in the upper right hand corner of your menu bar. When you let's close system preferences, when you close, uh, click on the icon, select show emoji and symbols and you'll get a list of all the different symbols and emojis that are available. You may not see an entire list like you see on my computer. In case you don't, click on the gear button in the upper left corner, choose customize list, and then you can select which categories of symbols and emojis you would like to view in your application. Once you're done, you can go to math symbols, which is one of the categories, and you can choose any of the math symbols that you want. For example, this is the one that I use for the similarity operator. You could even search using the Unicode. Just enter the Unicode value and it will show you the corresponding character code out here, which in this case is the wavy dash. And that way you can easily find all the different symbols that are there. The next important bit is the white space around the operator. If an operator has a white space on both the sides or doesn't have a white space on both the sides, then it is interpreted as a binary operator. This is what would appear for an infix operator. If an operator has white space only on the left, then it is a prefix unary operator. If an op operator has white space only on the right, then it is a postfix uni unary operator. If an operator does not have a white space on the left, but is followed by a dot, then it is treated as a postfix unary operator. Finally, any round, brace, square brackets appearing before or after the operator, along with comma, colon, semicolon, they are all treated as white space. Make sure that we put the white space in the correct place while using the operators. This is very, very important because as we can see, it influences how the different symbols are interpreted. So in the first example, star star is the operator that we have. A star star B or A white space star star white space B causes star star to be interpreted as an infix operator. But if there's a white space on the left or on the right, as in example two and three, they are identified as prefix or postfix operators. And finally, in the fourth example, since there is a dot following the star star, star star is treated as a postfix operator. There are some exceptions to the rules we just saw, especially with the exclamation mark and the question mark. 
exclamation mark and question mark, which are predefined, are always treated as postfix if there is no white space on the left. If we used to use if we wish to use question mark in optional chaining, then it must not have white space on the left. To use it as a ternary conditional operator, it must have white space on both the sides. Here's the interesting bit. Operators with a leading or trailing greater than or less than symbol are split into multiple tokens. For example, in dictionary string comma array of int, the last two arrows are not interpreted as a shift operator. So there is no confusion there. Now that we know about the allowed symbols or white spaces, as far as operators are concerned, we can focus on constructing them. There are certain rules for constructing operators. Each operator consists of a symbol which forms the operator head. The head is the first character in the operator. The head may or may not be followed by one or more characters, which are operator characters. The head and the optional characters combined together form the operator. The head itself can contain any one out of a set of valid symbols. Or it can start with a period, that is the dot operator. These are some of the symbols allowed for usage as the head of the operator. You can choose any of those. For all the successive characters, you can use any of the symbols allowed for the head along with some additional allowed symbols. The list above contains all the allowed symbols. Some of the symbols are valid for operators that start with a, the same symbols in fact, are valid for operators that start with a period. Let's have a look at some examples. Here's an example of a custom operator. A dot star, a dot plus dot or just the similarity mathematical symbol, the square root symbol, two consecutive stars, or wavy dash along with a star. All of them are valid symbols. As far as infix operators are concerned, there is also the question of precedence. Precedence is used to determine the operator priority when there are multiple operators in a single statement. When declaring the precedence group, we need to provide four values, higher than, lower than, associativity, and assignment. While the first two values are straightforward, that's because they simply help determine the exact position of the newly created precedence as compared to existing precedences, the associativity and assignment are extra items that are not immediately clear. The assignment of a precedence group specifies the precedence of an operator when used in an operation that includes optional chaining. So if it is set to true, then the operator follows the same grouping rules as assignment operators from the standard library. If it is set to false, then it follows the same rules as operators that don't perform any assignment. Associativity determines the order in which a sequence of operations with the same precedence are evaluated in the absence of grouping brackets. So for example, four minus six minus seven has the minus sign which has left associativity. And that means it associates with the values on the left. In this case, the operation four minus six is grouped and then the minus seven operation is performed. Of course, it is possible for operators to not have associativity. In that case, non-associative operators of the same precedence level can't appear adjacent to each other. 
here are some of the default values that are available. The these are not sorted by priority. If you want more information about that, you can view Apple's documentation on the developer portal where they give you all these precedences sorted in the order of priority. Now that we've seen all the rules re related to allowed symbols, white spaces, character combinations, and precedence, we can go ahead and start creating our own operators. We will look at one example of each type, prefix, postfix, and infix. Let us look at prefix operators. We will create an operator star star for squaring. For that, we will go ahead and implement a prefix function that will take a value, multiply it by itself, and return the answer back. And there you go, we can go ahead and easily create an operator. How about postfix operators? For this, we will create an operator that converts a value to a string. So we'll use the wave arrow symbol. And for an example struct person, we will create a static postfix function for it, which will take the value of the person type and convert it to a string representation and send it out to us. Using it is very simple. All we have to do is just use the operator that we've just created. And we'll get a string value for that type. Let us look at infix operators. We'll take the example of similarity comparison. For that, I've got an enum with four possible values, exactly the same, almost the same, slightly similar, and completely different as the four possible values of comparison. I also have a precedence with a higher than uh, addition precedence, lower than multiplication, no associativity, and assignment is true. I declare the infix operator with the precedence I have, and then proceed with the implementation of the static function for my infix operator. The infix operator takes two values, one on the left hand side, one on the right hand side, and returns the com comparison result. In this case, I'm extending the person type and implementing the operator for that. And it will tell me whether the two people are completely different or they're almost the same or they're exactly the same. So I implement the comparison logic within this operator method. And as far as usage is concerned, I go ahead and create uh, some sample values for that type. Um, I create three or four different values so that we can test different possible results that come out. Now that I have the values, I can go ahead and use the operator. One of the things I've done is I've created a code snippet for the operator so that I don't have to copy it from somewhere else every time since it's not a standard operator. Uh, that makes things a lot easier. And there you go. That's how easy it is to create and use our own infix operators. Creating operators is very easy. Most of the requirements are rather straightforward. However, choosing the right symbol is a very important task. The one thing that we should keep in mind is not to overuse these custom operators. It can be very tempting to do this, but abstracting everything can make the code look a little too vague. We need to identify situations where using operators makes good sense. So that is how you can create operators. I have uploaded some of the operators that I've created and you can try out the code. Here is the link to download these projects. You will also find the link to the article that I've written on this topic in the comments window, along with the link to the GitHub repositories. Thank you.